Hey, I'm Miss Chrissy. Uh, and I'm Steve. And this is JAGCast, episode 134, the podcast of the Jake in Town Arts Garage. Right, where we talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and other interesting people at the intersection of the arts and technology. Yes. And today we have our first guest of the new year, Stephen. That's right. 2024 is upon us. We're living in the future. And we thought, who better to welcome us into this brand new adventure than uh, our good friend Mike Estabrook, who is yeah. a wonderful musician. And he works, uh, his primary gig is at Broken Goblet. So everybody can already take a drink because we mentioned Broken Goblet in the show. <laughs> but uh the Mike is going is here to talk about his uh his new stuff he's doing over there and we wanted to bring him on also because he's just a remarkable guy. If you we're going to have to talk about it, but when I saw Mike's song list, it it's just it's crazy long. Like I've never seen anybody could sing or perform that many songs. And then on top of that, I saw Mike at Christmas, the first time I saw his performance doing uh this thing with the like Grinch songs. Uh, Mike will, Mike will explain it, but he does this thing where he sings like really dirty and and funny uh renditions of christmas classics and originals uh it's adults only and it's uh, it's just a fun time it's like the opposite of what we talked about previously with uh righteous jolly and his his show the uh, live town christmas carol which is all wholesome and and good this is like the opposite of that too <laughs> but it was a lot of fun so we have a lot of stuff i think to talk about today plus a game called something bringing that back yep i'm excited i added some new questions that's good for the new year. I, are they hopefully they're weird they're all the questions are weird steve i think but maybe not i don't know well, i guess we'll find out okay so without further ado let's bring on mike and uh say hello hello mike hey guys good to see you hi mike welcome thank you thank you for having me i'm i didn't didn't occur to me that i was the first guest of the new year but i suppose that would be a weekend so thank you for doing that Oh yeah, yeah. First guest, and uh, what, I said we wanted to have you on because there's so much stuff going on right now in the new year. So I think it's actually good timing. By the time this comes out, if people are watching it live, um, maybe there will be news about the Broken Goblet stuff, or it will be soon. So soon, there should be news in the next couple of weeks for sure. So yeah, so right around when this comes out. So, yeah. um, Mike, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Because I, I probably didn't do a very good job. Oh, my name is Mike Estabrook. I, I'm from New York originally. I've been living in, I was living in Pennsylvania for about 10 years and then moved to Mount Holly, New Jersey about three years ago. And um, just picking up and playing in the music scene. I, I played a little bit in New York and we were living down in Atlanta for five years. I played down there a bunch. And then um, moving back up to PA, started all over again don't really have any family here it was just completely start from scratch building a music thing and then moving to jersey even though it's only 20 minutes really away from where i was it's, i'm i'm starting over so like booking new places and getting into new venues around here and meeting the local people and still splitting my time half and half between pennsylvania and jersey but um, I work full time. Also, music is not my full time gig. I, I wish it was sometimes, but sometimes I'm really appreciative that it's not. So I play about twice a week, two or three times a week, depending on if there's private events or something like that. But I love it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't not play. That's not an option for me. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know you had a, a day job. I do. Yeah. Uh, everybody. <laughs> Everybody Thursday nights always like, oh, let's ha we're gonna hang out after, and like I get done at ten o'clock Thursday nights, and by the time I pack up and get off the stage, it's eleven, and I'm like, oh, I should probably go. I get work in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, a lot, of, a lot of musicians have that situation. Hopefully, yeah. it's not permanent, and you'll be able to do it. I, I like it though because it, it allows me to be selective on what gigs I take. I don't have to take every single gig that's offered. I can kind of pick and choose. I don't have to drive an hour and a half just to do a gig because. Right. I my day job pays the bills, but but it allows me to to be a little more picky on the, the gigs that I do, which I well, appreciate. Yeah. So you do you do like your situation then? I do. It's it's like a hybrid thing that I've kind of I've worked many years this way to to balance it to where it's like enough that I'm playing enough to feed my soul, but I'm not playing too much that it distracts from my personal life. You know, so it's it is a yeah. fine line. Yeah. But I think I got it now. I like I like where I'm at. 
Nice. So you play every week at Broken Goblet? Every Thursday for nine years, which is crazy. If, if you're a musician and you know about vertical gigs and gigs that are consistent, nine years is an insane amount of time. Um, it's just because we're friends and we're family now, and it's not really, you know, they will probably fire me tomorrow if it wasn't, if we weren't friendly. <laughs> you, no, you and uh, Kara both make that joke all the yeah, time. Um, yeah. We, yeah, we're in the same, we're in a similar situation, her and I with them, but it is, it's a family and, and I, I love it and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I appreciate every single week that I get to play, even if it's the same people that come out every, every week, it doesn't matter. I, I love it. Yeah, when when I think of Broken Goblet, I think of you know obviously the owners, uh, and I also think of you. Your face comes to mind, and so does Kara's because he's been there so long. Good. I remember I that. even before I met either of you, I remember you because I would see the ads all the time. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, your name's years. like always on the schedule. It's like you yeah. know. Uh, yeah, I I I love that because I get a lot of private events out of people who have just seen me at Goblet, and they'll go. The, somebody will introduce themselves to me and I'm, I'll say, hey, how, do, do I know you? Have we met before? And they go, no, no, I saw you at Goblet. So that happens all the time. And I picked up a lot of other gigs, side gigs, private events, stuff like that from just people recognizing my name from Goblet. So that's awesome. That's cool. So you have, unfortunately, Thursday is not a day that I get to go places but yeah. um <laughs> but steve has seen you but i know you have like a huge repertoire of songs that's like part of your like identity as a musician so yep. steve showed me a photo of it steve are you gonna show oh this isn't this isn't a photo this is live look at this that's, okay that's page one <laughs> we can scroll and scroll and scroll and yeah. scroll if you're watching this on video just look at this that's so many songs three columns small text on a on a web page and it still takes a minute to scroll. No, I it's, can't uh, see a single thing there, Stephen. But I well, believe we, you. <laughs> we have everything from three doors down here without you at the top, and all the way at the bottom is uh, Zach Bryan. Something in the orange. I don't even know what that song is. I don't even know who Zach Bryan is. But <laughs> there's a lot of songs in between. So so what I, happens if someone requests a song that isn't on the paper? They can do that. So. I started this request thing at Old Goblet when I first started playing there, and it was a way to just really honestly, and I tell people this all the time, to keep me from getting bored. If if I, uh, if there are some musicians who have the same set list every time they play, it's the same thirty songs, and I rely on my iPad a little bit. I do it's there, and I have words on it because I'm horrible at remembering lyrics, but. It's also for me not to get bored. If I'm playing the same songs every week, then I will get bored, and I feel like that boredom will convey to the audience. So let's make let's make it a different show. And I've played for almost 20 years now, and I can't say that I've ever played the same set twice. It's always a different set. It's really just catered to what the audience at that specific room want to hear. And I think that's great, because then people there feel connected to the stage they feel like they're a part of the the act and the music and they it's they get to hear what they want and i do have veto power and i exercise it all the time i say no totally fine but you saw that list it's it's almost 1500 songs and what the request thing does is it whittles that 1500 down to maybe the 50 or 100 songs that the people in that room at that time want to hear and then i can take that 50 or 100 and work from there and and pare it down but i can't look at this 1500 list and do anything useful with it on stage so it's just a way for me to like target the people that are there at that night so cool. i th it sounds like could you even do f this many songs without an ipad would you, could you do it with like no. a traditional like it would be way too much paper right no yeah. i mean i i used to have a book like a giant binder it wasn't 1500 songs was no it? i mean yeah. it was when i was living in atlanta so it was more, over 10 years ago and they were probably six or 700 at the time which is still a lot but like that yeah. book was getting too big and every time i would add a song i'd have to print out the paper and laminate it and mm -hmm. put it in the thing and alphabetize it it was so much work I... and it, i used to even when i was here when i first got here i had laminated songbooks the people that saw me at old goblet would remember 
I had laminated songbooks that I would pass out and that was my request to way. And then COVID happened and I didn't really want to keep giving people physical things to, to touch and put their mm -hmm. beers on. And every time I would pass these books out, they would come back dirty and stained with beer all, everywhere on them. I would lose them and it was a real hassle to update them. And so I said, no more. We're going to the QR code. So I have now a QR code that goes on all of my marketing. All of my sign has it. You scan the code and it takes you to that page that you just pulled up with the song list. And then you can text from there. And it makes it really simple for people to make requests. And they might not be... Some people are shy and don't want to stand up yeah. in the middle of a bar and be like, hey, can you play? So this is like a <laughs> secret kind of quiet ballot request. And it makes it it made it easier for me too. So it was really a win win, and and I don't know too many other people that do it. I know a few, but um, do you, do you have any? Like uh, uh, since we're we're always talking about like the tech side of things a little bit here, do you have any particular uh, software you like to use on your iPad to help you manage all these songs and this and uh, yeah. the QR code and the text messages and everything? The, well, the QR code I just had made and the the text thing is just a, I have a Google Voice number that. It, ports to my phone so uh, like people think i'm giving out my phone number to everybody in the world and <laughs> technically it is, it is forwarding to me so yeah. they i do get messages on my my regular phone quite a, often from goblet regulars usually who are just bored and looking to text me at weird hours of the night but <laughs> that's funny i, I know <laughs> um, that if someone is I, if someone's giving out their number on stage obviously not their private number <laughs> yeah but i guess that's not I, obvious you'd be surprised I'm with the yeah. amount of people that think that i'm just plastering my number everywhere but yeah i guess technically it is because it does come to my phone but i don't you know i don't yeah. open it up after i'm off stage but, exactly um and then on my ipad there's an app called gig book ah yeah gig book i don't it's not developed anymore the the Developers don't do any; they don't update it anymore. But it still works, and to me, it is the easiest way. I do all of my editing in Word, and then I save from Word to PDF, and then they get imported into GigBook as PDF. So that's always been the easiest way for me to work with the tabs. Oh, nice! Yeah, I don't remember when I was a long time ago taking guitar lessons. I and it was like the or like the first iPad Airs, and uh, that's when I jumped on iPads. I don't remember what I was using. I was using some software. My music instructor, my guitar instructor at the time, I mean, he was telling me how revolutionary iPads were. Like he was so excited, and uh, when they had the iPad Pros, I think he went for one of those really big ones. But That's like, what I have. yeah, yeah, I mean, because you get the the larger screen. Because I, it, it was, it's still hard to read <laughs> sheet music, yeah. or 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 anything with the even the regular size ones on stage. But he said it was it was revolutionary for his work because he was a working musician as well as an instructor at the university, and. Uh, you know, you would talk about how, like you were saying, he had big binders he used to have in his trunk of his car. And then once he could switch to an iPad, it was just this iPad right here. And and yeah. in a pinch, you can even use your phone. I mean, I saw, I see Kara using her phone. I don't know how yeah. she could see I the don't phone, either. you know? But yeah, <laughs> she, I, even I have good eyesight. I'm not even sure I could I could see that on stage with lights and stuff because you, I don't know how she does it. But no, the, in a pinch. The... You know? I had the, the regular iPad for many years and I worked off that and it was okay, but as I got older, my eyesight started going. I, I upgraded to the iPad Pro, and I'll never, I can never imagine going back to the regular the 12, size. The twelve point nine one, right? The really big one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and now it's great. And I can, yeah, I have, I, I have a mini. And zoom. I have a mini, which is yeah, good for like reading books or something. Sure. But, but I, I really want to get an iPad Pro, like a giant one, because they're also really useful. I have a developer friend of mine who has a sixteen-inch MacBook Pro, and when we have our saturday meetups we do once a month when he comes out he has that and sometimes he'll bring his ipad pro 12.9 it's right next to it he has a whole other screen yeah it all works wirelessly it's, it's very nice and it's crazy like uh, my day job is i you know, i'm an it guy so i, I work oh, from cool. home and i do it support from home and i tell my teammates always don't believe me when i say this but i don't have a personal computer and i haven't for over 10 years i wow. just don't i just don't need one with this just ipad yeah ipad yeah, just I, an iPad. Oh wow. Yeah, like I have a work computer that I use for work, but I don't have a personal one. Everything I do personally, recording, any kind of editing I need to do, this iPad Pro is a beast. It handles all of it. So I've, I've just never need, felt the need to do anything bigger than that. Yeah, you know, I and in my world, I'm a software developer, and 
and and the Apple ecosystem. So we we were talking about the iPad. Is the iPad going to replace it? And this is all in the tech press too. Is the iPad going to replace the Mac? Is it going to come the thing? And I remember even to this day, people talk about it. And in my space, a little more dismissive of it because the types of work we do still requires Macs and stuff. But as sure. you've gotten more powerful, I mean, I was always of the of the, the view that not even iPads. I thought when uh, iPhones first came out, I said, look, the primary computing device for people is going to be their phone. It's going to be their iPhones and their Android phones. And then when the iPads came out, I'm like, the iPads are going to be there to help the people that are used to using their phones, but now they want a bigger screen. Yeah. And you're going to have people doing that. Uh, and I, I just remember there was, there was so much resistance to this in the early days. Now I think it's pretty well established. I mean, the, these these things work great for the types of computing that most people are doing uh, if you're not actually doing software. Anymore. And the, fu- the funny thing about iPads is they're so powerful now. They're as powerful as uh, like a MacBook Air. Yeah. And you could do more. The only thing limiting them is the software. It's always been the software. It's like uh, Apple just has not quite gotten the operating system in some respects to the level where uh, it works or, or maybe developers just haven't found a business model that works. There are some powerful pieces of software on there, but uh, you, if you're doing a lot of uh, really uh, prof- professional workflows, you end up running into to issues, but it gets better every year. So I would not be surprised yeah. if if in the near future, like maybe this next next update, they're probably going to do an, another update. They didn't do any iPad updates last year, so they're probably doing this year. And then maybe this maybe this will be the year because uh, I know that all my developer friends really want like Xcode, which is a developer environment for building software for Apple stuff. They want like some form of Xcode on the iPad because it's powerful enough to do it. And there's almost something like that. There's something called Playgrounds. If you if you ever want to like program some stuff in Swift, which is the, the language, you can get Playgrounds on your iPad, and it's super fast. It's like faster to program something in that than it is on an, on Xcode. Like it works faster. This this, but you just can't build certain like complicated things. Yeah. But you can build simpler things, and you can actually get it in the App Store. Like a kid can get an iPad and build something in Playgrounds and publish it to App Store. It's it's amazing, and I don't know if people are fully aware of how much stuff you can do on an iPad. Yeah, I, I used cool. to be a graphic designer before I um, got into IT. And at, if you told people you were doing graphic design or photo editing or video editing or music recording, any of the things that I do on an iPad 10, 15 years ago, they would laugh at you and they go, no, 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 you, you need a real Mac. You need a computer. And now yeah. you just don't like for most things I do all my audio recording on this iPad Pro, no problem. And I don't run Pro Tools. I could, but I don't. I run GarageBand, which is perfectly fine for what I do. And the audio interface works flawlessly. There's no delay or nothing. I do um, photo and video editing on the iPad. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I do a lot of that. Can, it's just capable of anything now. And, and this yeah. Pro is just a. Beast. Yeah. My, my um, designer focused developer friends i mean they all have ipad pros they use for design work i mean it's it's some amazing tools and it has uh it's as accurate as as basically anything else you could buy for a pen interface mm-hmm. so it's it's truly great for that kind of thing uh and uh animation is great on it too there's some tools to do like keyframe animations i have a, I have a friend of mine uh Coltero, who was on here uh early on uh, in the video era here uh, and he he keeps wanting to make this uh, iPad app for keyframe animation. So hopefully you will actually get something this year. I've seen prototypes for last for several years, like a simpler way to make keyframe animations because you know it seems natural to do it because you can kind of draw on the iPad and manipulate it like it's paper, like mm-hmm. digital paper, and do the same kinds of gestures and just it feels like a natural way of doing uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, I've never tried the audio recording. Like what are you using for, what tool are you using for that on the iPad? Just GarageBand. Oh, just Garage. Oh yeah, yeah that, is, that does it, work. Yeah. It's built in and it's native and it, it works perfect. I, mean, I don't do anything crazy. I'm not recording yeah, 40 yeah. tracks at once, but for what I do in the acoustic scene, it's totally fine. And yeah. um, I've never had any issue with it. I love what, when I get, when I go to get tattoos that, Every tattoo artist now uses an iPad yep. as yep. they yep. as they work to just manipulate the drawings. It's so cool to watch, and I don't understand it, but I love watching it. Yeah, <laughs> so. another cool application. <laughs> Maybe we should move on from the tech topics because Chrissy's eyes are glazing over here. <laughs> I know, not a tech person, but that's okay. <laughs> well, look, um, we got we got our technology topic in for yeah, the, uh, can, the podcast. I know. Steve's excited. He I'm very excited. Oh. Also, I. Off. I am I am drinking one of my my remaining uh, Bubba's tea I got like oh, in January nice. last year. I I I know I have like 
like five or six left, and I just I cherish them. But I thought I missed, it was worth I it was the worth, original. Yeah, I, I thought um, it was worth breaking out for you though. Sure, I tell Bob all the time. I'm like, I need you to make an original tea bag because I'm not a fruit flavor guy, yeah. and I'm mm-hmm. in my beer. And that was the original one. Was the one without any fruit. It was just the tea flavor, whatever they the old tea they used to use. And they can't get that right. So yeah, they stopped being able to get it. But but something I don't I don't know what the deal is with the with the next batch of this if and when. And that's yeah, he's happen, always but, he's always doing new stuff. But uh, I am always excited. I, I told Chris, Chris, you know about the tea scission, right? I I do. Yes. <laughs> we didn't have one last year. Uh, but uh, that is like one of my favorite Broken Goblet events for regulars. Is you get to go and drink variations uh, and vote on the next uh, the next tea beer I, anyway it was my it was my it was the beer they introduced me to bro god it made me like like f- like fall in love with the beer there um i i've talked about it on the podcast before probably but obviously now with you mike i first discovered broken goblet randomly like i was just looking for something to do i think it was a friday night some like, some years ago and it was in the old lo- they were in the old location and i saw it was it was a uh, caliber and the attitude and their band was listed on Facebook as being from Willow Grove mm-hmm. or something. And I was like, I, I like, no, no one, that's where I used to live. That's where I grew up. And I was like, no one cool comes from Willow Grove. So I was like, where are, they, <laughs> where are these people playing? I think, and, I, and they were playing like this broken gobble. Like, where is this? And it's an office park. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. It's like 30 yep. minute drive and there's parking. So I'm a suburban guy and I'll do it. And it was just tiny little place. And I wa- walked in there and it was not only just like an amazing time, because that's where I met, um, you know, Cal and her, her singing was just incredible. But, that's where I think I had the first, like, I think the Bubba's tea bag it was called back then. And, uh, yeah, it was just this amazing. I don't know what version it was. I don't know if it was the very first version. It was, like, an earlier one. And it Could was be. so good. It was so good. And I just, that's the only thing I drink. I would just go out just for that beer. I would crave it. I crave it. Like, a couple weeks ago, but I'm like, I, I, I don't know who's playing. But I got to go, get a, I gotta go yeah. get a tea bag. Somebody's playing, though. And that, that's yeah. the thing I've always loved about Goblet yep. is that they've, they've curated such a music program that, people now who know about them can just depend on i i might not know who's playing that night although they do promote it now very well mm-hmm. um even if you don't know who's going or you don't know who the band is even just go and like they don't have bad music there so like you can That's generally true. you can generally expect that if you go on any given night you're going to hear something cool or different and good there's been a crazy amount of of activity there in the last you know 6 8 months yeah a lot more uh, big bands, like bands that I, I mean, I don't know, but big, I think ska bands and like heavier bands have been coming through. And just in the middle of the week, and I would see photos or video they would publish, and it was just a packed house. Yeah, and that that's always been the kind of the end game, right? Like they, they've always wanted to have a music venue out of it, and yeah, we they make beer also, and, but the events are the thing, right? So they're ramping that up now with the space that they have, and um it's awesome to see this. I don't, I don't know half these bands either, but they come in and, and yeah, they, they fill the place up. So obviously they have a fan base and they're, they're making the right moves and yeah. making the right people. And it's, it's a good mix of music too. It's not just all metal. No. Some there's, like you said, ska bands, there's punk bands, there's, there's punk bands, there's reggae like... bands. There's, there's jazz stuff. There's, they do the school of rock. The, the kids come in and play like, they're, just they're really good. I, I saw one. Yeah, they are really good. A few years ago. And it's such a variety that you, if you're not, if you, metal's not your thing or ska's not your thing, or just wait a couple of days and something else will come exactly. along. Exactly. And and be, uh, as they're doing that, there's more of these ticketed events in the main room. It's turning it into, as you said, a music venue. So they are planning on opening this other location that's like in the same building, like right next door. Mm-hmm. I believe it's called the Mixing Room, if I got yep. that right. And you are, you've already had a performance there that I had to miss, but... Uh, you're going to be there. That's what I heard. You're the, that's your new home base, right? For that's Thursday my nights. new home base. That I think that room is going to be used for anything acoustic, and then ma- the main room is going to be a full band room. It's going to be there. That's the, the goal, and they're going to do those bigger shows in there consistently. But they've, you know, soundproofed it, and they've made it so that there can be simultaneous events. They can have a band in the big room and me playing in the mixing room at the same time, and it won't affect anything. We won't hear each other. And That's it awesome. gives people, yeah, like it gives people just a, an alternative. A lot of times, what happens is they come in and they want to. Somebody just wants to sit and have a beer. They didn't know mm. that there was a metal show that night, and they maybe don't want to sit there and and have that kind of volume blasted at them while they want to enjoy their beer. So now, instead of having to just leave and ditching the whole experience, they get to go next door 
and have a chill, more cozy, comfortable. There's couches that like it's super cozy in there and just a whole different vibe. And as a musician, I'm looking forward to it because I, while I love that room and I love that stage, I love being up there. It's obviously amazing with that kind of production to play, but the the new space is going to be a little more intimate and bring back kind of the old feel. And, and for my Thursday, you know, it's not good for a big band, obviously, but for what I do on Thursdays, people are just can yell out requests now instead of it doesn't have to be all text. If you want to text then text, but you have now have the option to go back to yelling out requests and people love that. And I did too. And it just gives that little more family vibe that I've tried to kind of curate on my Thursday. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, it being Broken Goblet, the sound in there, of course, I'm guessing is great. Yeah, and I, I've been joking with Jay about that, that, like, Jay's backup PA is better than everyone else's regular <laughs> PA. Like, everybody's like, oh, but it's not going to sound as good over there. I'm like, do you know, do you know Jay? Yeah, I, I, don't, don't I, haven't heard, I haven't heard anything in that room yet, so I'm excited to check it out. Um, so... He's got he's got big speakers hanging from the ceiling just like <laughs> nice. he does in the main room. Just, yeah, just it's 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 going to be awesome. I mean, that's the thing about that's the other thing about Goblet uh, is, is that the beer is always really good and eclectic, and I like that about it. A lot of different ver, different styles and experimentation there, but it was always like the sound was always so good. The uh, the choice, the curation of the acts was always so good. So as you said, there's never I've, I've literally never had a bad time. I think at Brown Goblet like ever, and that's always important. Something. That's yeah. important to to vary it up, but also to keep consistency of the quality of music. Like I, I've been playing, like I said, almost twenty years in in three major different markets in the in the country, and the theme that I've seen is that, I, and I'm I'm talking only in the acoustic scene. I don't really know much about. The, I know a little bit about the band scene. I have lots of friends in bands, but it's a completely different scene, right? So in my little acoustic circle where I live the quality that it just seems to be not as important to a lot of places and they'll just whoever whoever comes in and, and asks to play they'll let them play and goblet has always not turned people away but like there's a little bit more vetting there's they they, they listen just to people before they book them and that's important and the, yeah, the quality yeah. that people are used to from from going there is a lot to do with that, and and they're yeah, very I, selective. I think um, I think the only band I really there's only like two 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 artists I think I've ever like said like just badgered on social media that they go to Broken Goblet. I think and uh, and they're both really good acts. It was uh, e, e Joseph, you know, E Joseph Spiral's a friend, and he's amazing, and um, you know, and Camera Thief from Jenkintown, who was his amazing band, and they both yeah, were. Did a good job, and Camera Thief's been there what, twice now, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I that, and the reason was because I I thought they were really good, and uh, they you know be great up there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I saw Ed Ed at the old location. Uh, he's like uh, Ed Neenan. Uh, I think he's not like in the area, so it's not. I don't know. <laughs> but it'd be cool uh, for one of his active bands to come up there someday. But Camera Thief, that was like a highlight. That was uh, supposed to be the week everything shut down in the pandemic that was their album release show and it was and it got shut down and then, and then they came back like after everything opened up like a year later they came back and did that's the show awesome. yeah, they just great. they waited they waited because they were like they wanted to make sure that they did their their release at broken goblet because mainly because i've told them for years how great broken goblet is yeah uh and uh i don't know i don't know if they ever went there before that night but i remember specifically a lot of jenkintown people came out that night and uh, like these are people that I was I was telling like for, like they would see my me post about Broken Goblet like every week for years basically and they were like you're right this place is amazing like I, I got multiple that. multiple comments that night from people yeah. and they weren't all drunk not all of them were drunk <laughs> I love hearing that when people say they come in for the first time and then, and I like, yeah. I meet somebody new there and they'll go oh it's my first time here I didn't even know this place was here and like, it's yeah. kind of like, you, you know they have a giant sign out front but other than that. You have to just know it's there sometimes. So like, you might want to put like a subtitle that says like music here, music beer. Oh well, yeah, it says I think it says brewery it say music events. I think yes. that's the. Does it say that? I'm just I just I go by and I just I guess I don't even register. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Um, yeah, that was my experience. So, and you're you're going to be in this mix room doing your Thursday night, but you your Thursday night act has recently evolved, right? So I don't want to move mm -hmm. on until we until we fully explore this. 
it's not just the request, right? Don't you alternate between that and a and uh, um, a open mic? Yep. So um, about four or five months ago, we started doing an open mic where I I have run open mics before. I've done a couple of them over the years, and and we had no intention really on doing it, but we said let's a to mix it up. You know, I've been playing for nine years every single week, and I love it. And I have some very dedicated Thursday night people, and I love them. Shout out to my Thursday folks, but let's mix it up a little bit. We can do something different. So every other week, we're doing open mic. And I, what I love about it is that there's many open mics in the area. There's many, many open mics. And I'm sure they're all great, and they're run by great people, and people go where they feel like they have the best experience. But it's not often that you play an open mic that's not – in the corner, you know, you play in the set up in the corner of a bar and it's somebody's equipment and they, they run, they mix you as best they can, but you get on the goblet stage and mo a lot of people who play open mics have never been on a stage like that. And they certainly don't have a professional sound man mixing for them. And everybody who walks up on that stage and plays, they come down after their set and they go, Oh my God, that's the best I've ever sounded. And I've, I've met people that have come to open mic and they go, they you know they get off stage and I go what, it, do you play out is this your like what do you, how often do you play it was really good and people have said to me no, no this is my first time and I go what do you mean your first time like you, is this your tonight is your first time playing live on stage and I go yeah <laughs> and I, twenty years ago I wish that that was my first time playing out was on that kind of stage but you don't most people don't get that opportunity so yeah I love that. Yeah, there's a million open mics and and you can go anywhere in the area, but you're not gonna sound like that anywhere. And and now, I mean, it won't be on that big stage, but it's gonna be right. in probably the best sounding acoustic room right. in the region. And it's gonna be a more intimate room, and the, yeah. the same amount of people will fill that room, so it'll look like there's even more people. And yeah, yeah the, the sound quality in there is gonna be just as good. It's, it's not it's not degrading at all. Is there like a, a a stage area designated for this? Like, what does it look yeah, like? Yeah, they they built a little stage. It it really is only meant for two people. Like, I don't think it's, that's there's... like the old the old stage was like that. <laughs> yeah. right, from the I old location, it was, it was cool yeah. though. I don't think there's even going to be trios there. Like Jay has said, we're we're really trying to give it to two, one or two. two. Okay, one or two, which is cool. Like that, it's appropriate for the space. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's also a distillery that yeah. is like their, their their own distillery and. Eventually, they they told me they're going to be making uh, like uh, whiskeys, which I'm excited for. But that's going to yep, take some time. That, that's going to start up. They have their distilling license, and there's a um a a restaurant tour coming in. Yeah, oh mixology. yeah, Andres is really. I, I, he actually worked at um, a place around here, and um, he's made several drinks for me that have all been fabulous. So I have, I'm, I'm, I'm I have all, all the confidence in him that he's going to kill it there. I'm excited about that I, myself. <laughs> and and uh, it's, yeah, it's cool. Like not everybody won't. They're, not everybody's a beer drinker either. Sometimes mm -hmm. people come in and and they might not be a beer person, and now they have another option. It's just it's just rounding yep. out the availability availability to people, which is and awesome. the um I know it's going to have a professional kitchen. I don't know how built out it is now, but I remember go walking through and it was empty a long time ago and it was huge. Yeah, and I think they found somebody and and they're starting with them soon. So so Work that so, the so so the food is going to be top notch too so i'm I'm just saying there's basically no reason to go anywhere else right <laughs> pretty soon like it, i i think people are like uh uh i think like john i ran it like john Fay was talking to me the other day and he i think he said something to me he's like you're the only guy i know who's like always at like broken goblets like your thing uh and it's like yeah because it's so good it's like I, I, when i think about going somewhere friday or saturday night i go like what's that broken goblet first because it's just right. that's right it's <laughs> it's partly because i'm lazy it's super convenient for me I mean, it's half an hour drive, but that's like nothing. And but it's just you know it's going to be quality, so I just don't like even look at other places sometimes. And being a, the suburbs is especially useful for me. And now I know if you live in a city, the calculus is maybe different, especially if you don't have a car or something. Sure. I know people. I have friends of mine. I try to get to come out there, and they're like, "Well, they're in the city, and it's like harder for them to get places and like that than it is for me." So it depends on your situation, but for me, it's it's always my my first on the on my list. And I know uh, Chrissy, it's become your your favorite place too, like your go to place. Yeah, I pretty much either go there or we walk somewhere in town. By, yeah, we're by... we're always on a like human robot or <laughs> or broken goblet. We just go between the two breweries most of the time. I haven't gotten to human robot yet. I want oh. I want to get there. 
They are great. So there's a lot of good jazz there if you like jazz. Nice. On Saturdays and Sundays, there's this brunch they do, uh, and it's uh, really good musicians come through there. Sweet. Uh, including friends of ours. So it's it's fun. And the beer is top-notch, like German delicious heard, beer. Very so good, good beer, yeah. Yeah, so my, my Thursday, it's, it's alternating open mic and request night. So I'm doing every other week. I'm doing my standard normal request night where I still have friends come in and, and play with me. We do random duos and still no practice, no rehearsal. I want people, I get people to come on stage with me that can just wing it. We're not going to practice. We're not going to make a set list. We're just going to take requests and see how it goes. And that's always been the way it's worked. And it's not for every musician that kind of performance style, but for me, it's always led to some really cool nights and spontaneous things that you don't expect. And then every other week, open mic. So I'm just alternating back and forth. And now with the mixing room opening, it'll be a lot easier to keep that schedule consistent because they can still book bands in the other room. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited about that. I uh, I hopefully will get to see the functioning room in the near future. And then, I mean, it's going to open for the public very soon i don't know when soon. i don't but very soon so by the time you're listening to this it'll either already be open or will be very soon so follow broken goblets various social medias i'll put links in the show notes for that uh as well and that's also where people uh, they can follow you and we'll put in your your content information in the show notes too but uh they can follow you or broken goblet to find out when you're doing the request show versus the open mic yep i'm gonna make sure there's a very clear <laughs> yeah. scheduled posted this year um because, yeah, it is confusing that it's you know it's different things every week. But I didn't want to have open mic every single week. I felt like that was yeah. too much. But then once a month is not really enough. So it's like a, mm-hmm. we're trying out a balance. It, well, we, can always, like a, we can always adjust. Yeah. But it, it's, like this, it's like this podcast where like once a month is not enough. Every week is kind of hard for us to keep yeah. up with. So we do, we do it every other week. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. So, um, Chrissy, do you have anything else you want, you want to uh... – Talk about, or should we jump? I want to play a game called something, Steve. I was just going to say that. Let's. I think it's time. It's time for a game called something. All right, let's do it. So this is, uh, as I say, more of an activity than a game. There are no rules. There's no winning or losing. Chrissy has a book, which uh, she's going to try to show you, right here, right there. A game called something. All right. Very nice. A little beat up. At yeah, the and, that, and that book has <laughs> questions on colored cards. So you're going to choose a color, and then Chrissy will choose the question, and she'll ask us all, and then we'll answer it, and we will learn something about each other, and it's usually the part of the show that goes completely off the rails. And we will laugh. Yes, at usually. Each other perfectly. Okay. Good. <laughs> usually because I have some, I have like no good answer for, for whatever crazy question. So let's go. All right. So I did add some. So I, I felt like I couldn't get rid of the old book, but it needed a spruce up. So I had to like make my own extra colored cards on the back here. They're blue and it's probably not legible because my handwriting is terrible. But there are some new options. So, Mike, we have gray, there's orange, yellow green, brighter orange, and Sharpie blue. Oh, let's go Sharpie blue for sure. Sharpie blue. New for the new year nice. is Sharpie blue. Okay. Um, what is the worst haircut you've ever had? <laughs> uh, and When I was in high school, which was late 90s, everybody had the bowl cut. That was the thing. It was just like pretty much straight around. It was awful, but that's what everybody was rocking back then. So I definitely had that haircut for a while. I I don't want to see any pictures of me with that haircut at this point. <laughs> I'm over it. But it happened. It was the thing. That's hey. funny. A bowl cut. I uh, well, probably it's see in my life, I only ever had basically one haircut for most of my life, and that was just a buzz cut that my mom would do or my aunt would do usually my aunt and so unfortunately for me my head is not shaped well for that so i'm pretty sure that was my worst haircut i just had it for the majority of my life and then when i like 10 years ago or something i was doing karate a lot and i and i still was rocking it but when i look at pictures of myself 
uh, with that haircut. It's just it does not look flattering. Yeah, and it's cringy. so now I get uh, I'm, I'm getting a professionally cut in here yeah. in uh, Jenkintown at the Greenwood Cutting Room, which nice. is uh, run by one of the guys from Camera Thief. So, well, there you go. So. Sweet. So my worst haircut when I was like I think like eight or nine, my mom cut these like crazy layers in my hair with bangs. And then they would set my hair in rollers overnight, every night. So like the foam rollers, you know, I don't know, like looking like a grandma. Then yep. they take it out in the morning and uh, pick out the curls. So it would be like that big, uh, you know, that big puffy curly thing but i was like nine years old so nice. <laughs> looking like a uh you know like middle-aged 80s woman like a nine-year-old like nine year grandma yes exactly <laughs> so that was definitely my worst haircut and and it took a lot it was a there was a lot of effort to that terrible hair which it, which made it even worse it wasn't like you just woke up and had bad right. hair you had to like be also floofed and you know fluffed, fluffed. and sprayed okay. and stuff so that was so a lot goes into hair a lot goes into for women's hair. Well, yeah, sometimes. I was gonna say not not so much my hair. My hair is now now I'm at the point where it's just like a little bit of water gets thrown on it just to get it in the right direction from yeah. the morning, and that's it. I'm off to go. Yeah, I put some gel in it, um, but it's it's uh, I'm, I mean it's lucky we both have hair, so true. <laughs> you know, not taking it for granted. No, so I, every time every time I go and get my hair cut, almost every time, I'm like you have a mate, you have great hair. It's like I get compliments on my hair. I never even thought about it before. Because you don't have a receding hairline. No, yeah, I age. mean, that's, yeah, yeah. I guess that's yeah. enough. It's it's not a thing in my family. It's a uh, you know, and I meanwhile, I our, fr our friend Mike, um, you know, he's he had been going bald since high school, since I knew him. That's when you, you go know. like this. That's when the go, buzz just do it. That's, that's when you go. <laughs> that's what we tried to convince him to go full Picard. We call it the full yep. Picard because he Real hair. Short. Yeah, take it all off. Happening. That's happening. No one that's needs to happening. know. Yeah. How bad never, it is under there. It never starts. That's where it's going. <laughs> yep. Um, all right. So you need to pick another color now. Okay. Uh, green. Green. Let's see what is in green. Hold on. Ugh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Ugh. I hate the green ones. Um, <laughs> she always says that. <laughs> Because they're old. Anyway, um, do you have a f old to me? Not old to Mike, yeah. but you know. Uh, do you have a favorite physical activity? Uh, I mean, keep it PG rated. <laughs> when I was young, I was a sports person. I played every sport except football. I played baseball. I played hockey. I played tennis for many years. I was in tennis almost through high school. Soccer was my main sport. My dad was the soccer coach. I was very involved in soccer, very sports minded all the way up until college. And in college, my freshman year uh, roommates were sweet mates were all hippies. And so their big activity would be to sit out on in a circle in the quad with their acoustic guitars and play. And I started hanging out with them and sitting in these circles, but I didn't play. So that was really my start of playing guitar i i played other instruments in high school but i i joined them because i wanted to be included in this circle it, it, it was it always seemed so fun and like people would sing along and i wanted to be part did of that you go but to school play. in san francisco where'd you go to school <laughs> i no, i went to school in new york on long island okay um but so the point of that story was that I did all these sports until I got to college. And then I, when I dove into music really and started playing guitar, stopped all sports. And now <laughs> I don't even think I could play. Like if I try to play soccer, I would just fall. I, I, <laughs> I no, mm. I don't have physical coordination anymore like that. Mm. Um, I go to the gym occasionally, but, but you no know, music, hauling my speakers around is my physical activity. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <There you> <laughs> uh, so, I guess my favorite physical activity was always has always been martial arts. I used to, I, used to, I studied twice in my life for long periods of time. I studied Shotokan uh, karate, uh, and really quite good at it actually. And it's, nice. I haven't done it in years though since then, except for like all my own. But that was probably my favorite thing. I liked doing it as a kid, and I did it again at Drexel like after I'd graduated. But I did it again, and it was a uh, it was very 
intense exercise. And since sure. then, I haven't I haven't found anything that intense since then. So that's why I keep thinking I want to go back and do some martial arts again. Maybe it's a different type. But that's like my favorite thing. The thing I actually do because I haven't done that in years now. The thing I actually do is like I like uh, weightlifting. Um, I do it. At, I have a little setup at home uh, that I want to keep. I want to keep growing, and uh, I, I've been doing that since for years. Uh, last few months, I haven't so much because I, I really messed up my shoulder, but it's it's getting better. I've been uh, doing rehab on it uh, at home, and so I'm about ready to get back into it more. But nice. that's what I like to. I like doing the weights because it's. Uh, I try to get Chrissy to do some weightlifting because it's it's really good for you. See. <laughs> He's like, no, it is. no, yeah, it is I, really good for you. I, I need to do more, more like really, running or something. I though. don't want to lift weights. <laughs> I know, she there are many it. other things well, I like to do, but not. Okay, so yeah. What, what, what is it you like to do? Boring. I can't take it. Um, so I, uh, I don't know if you know, Mike, but so I'm a dance teacher by profession. So I've been dancing my whole life. So, cool. I mean, I mean, that's technically my favorite physical activity, oh, yeah, but also my job, exercise. you know, yeah. so. Um, what's that thing you tried to teach me to do that all the children laughed at me when I tried to do it? A plie? Yes, a plie. I tried to do a plie, yeah. and and all the children laughed at me. Yeah, they it's were hysterical. Laughing. I couldn't do any of that. But um, but then I I do rock climbing with my youngest daughter too. So that's sweet. They're, they're both like fun. like spider people. We are. That's, um, that's impressive people. to me as someone who, with zero coordination, I would just climb on the wall and fall immediately. So that's really impressive that you can do any of that. So you're good at it. I've seen some pictures. I, I've only done rock climbing a few times in my life. Uh, like the rock uh, wall was at Drexel Gym. It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. And Chrissy's Can been. Be, yes. and, well, every time you come back from it, you're like telling me how you're, you've are you leveled up to another difficulty yeah. level, it seems. So it'd be, um, you're going to conquer that entire wall soon. Well, they switched some of them. So now there's new ones to conquer. <laughs> so and they're then they, called they also, problems. Yeah, they're called That's problems. They're called problems, like the so, paths. Oh, what, the wall. Okay, gotcha. What's What's yeah. the other thing you do that's actually you said is harder, but it's lower to the ground? Bouldering? Is I, that what's called? I don't boulder, but no, you don't. But you one. said you said that's harder, right? It was different. Or it's it's um, it was it's lower because you don't have a, you don't have any sort of device or a person holding you up. So if you fall, you have to catch yourself. So you don't go like two stories up. It's just like one story up. But I'm actually I'm like I'm scared of that, to be honest, because I don't you know, you can get hurt doing it. And I can't really get hurt. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, for it, professional that was... reasons, I can't get so hurt. There's no, there's so... no like harness. So if you fall, you just fall. For right. Bouldering. I mean, there's like techniques to falling. Like there's like, you know, like yep. curl in a ball and there's sure. like a crack one, one, pad, but... one of the things I learned in martial arts when I was a kid was how to fall and actually used it multiple times in my life to save myself from serious injury. And then people laughed at me because they're like, I did a roll or something and like, Oh, it's yeah, so I funny. Mean, I'm like, I, like well, my head didn't hit the ground. So it. right. I'm I alive. I understand right. the yeah. theories of falling, but I don't feel like I should like purposely risk it. It's kind of like skiing. Yeah. Like I won't yeah. go skiing because. Yeah. You could get seriously you know. hurt. Yeah. I, the same thing when I was doing martial arts, it's like every time I was do- doing that, one of the, well, I guess one of the reasons I was always doing like Shotokan, which is because that's, uh, you don't. It's not really full contact. You don't really most of the, most classes. You don't actually do much contact. But I was always worried about hurting my hand because if I hurt my hand, I can't type. If I can't type, it's hard for me to do software development. Yeah. So I, I'm always worried about my hands and carpal tunnel and other things. So uh, you know, I, I have to take care of that. I think uh, about that a lot as a musician. That like, if I if I was in a car accident or something and nothing mm-hmm. was hurt but my hands, like that. That's, that's just. I, awful I, yeah um, that's a problem right like yeah, a big problem yeah. well right. i i had this i had this experience mike of something going wrong with my hands because i developed right before the pandemic uh we, f- we figured it out that I, I i developed like this really early onset rheumatoid arthritis oh, that's my awful. mom had a lot of autoimmune diseases so i guess i got half of those genes so i developed this and it was it felt like carpal tunnel in my hands but it turned out that it was just inflammation from this it was really bad like i was I had trouble working with it. And now, luckily, I mean, I'm on medication and I've been like very well controlled, haven't had any symptoms in a long time and I feel fine. But um, but it was rough. And I, yeah, I had the same kind of thought. I was like, did, did I just, like, am I going to be able to do my job if this keeps going on? You know, I could barely, yeah. could barely function. So I understand that. It's, and It's a scary thought. Yeah. So luckily, though, we all still have our hands. Hands are intact. <laughs> Fingers crossed we keep them. <laughs> 
Uh, no, no accidents. I would, I would like function. my feet yeah. and my hips as well. Just saying. Yeah, oh, yeah, feet, yeah. feet would be good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, got okay. okay, one more. Yeah, one more. Uno mas. Um, there was a gray one in the beginning, right? I like the gray. Oh, one. there is a gray one. Is that a bad one? Oh, gray is my one? least favorite. No, you can know. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna play by the <laughs> rules that are aren't real rules. <laughs> um. Oh, Don't look! I added rules. to it something you missed from childhood. Something I miss from childhood. I miss playing in the street. Like, I I was born in '82, so like, I, I don't know if I, I was an '80s. 90s slash 90s kid but my teenage years were in the 90s that was when everybody would go play ho- we would play mm-hmm. hockey in the streets we would always in the streets just out doing something manhunt whatever we were doing outside there was no ipads there was no sitting and watching netflix that would just go outside and play and i although i get that kids these days now today wouldn't really want that but there was something about that not having any other option being forced to go out and, and actually interact with other kids. And, um, yeah, that, it, that was a good time. Yeah. I, I um, screaming car, car. Sure. Yeah. 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 Move, yeah but they were the, move the hockey net, but yeah, the cars exactly. weren't, That's the, the cars weren't speeding no. down the road. Like they seem to well, do now. Where, where I lived, there was like, there was, you couldn't play in, well, no, the kids used to play in the street out back behind my house when they were younger or they play in the parking lot. My kids, but well, um, I um, I grew where up in... I grew up, it was like way more suburban. So there were always yeah, particularly boys yeah. playing hot street hockey yep. and stuff yeah. like that um, with the net car. Yeah, the yeah we did that. Net, stop everything. That that happened. That was I was in Willow Grove, and this I mean, my dad still lives on the same street. And I distinctly remember being a kid, and there would just be like in the summer, there'd be like no traffic on that road. Now there's like a car every like minute. It's just constant. Be, People use it to cut through. To play. Yeah. Now and they drive like crazy up the street. They go way too fast, and uh, it just seems very dangerous. Uh, so, but for me, I don't know. It's hard to take. There's so many things that I think were actually like legitimately, objectively better in the '90s. I was born '81, so I'm right with you. Like, um, everything from toys being better back then, the cartoons were better. But I don't know. I think one of the things I've been thinking about uh, that I miss on the past is I feel like, and it could just be nostalgia, but I think it was true that it it seemed like things were just kind of quieter. Maybe it's because we didn't have the phones to bother us. Like I could leave the house and I could go and play and either by myself or go to a friend's house or go on my scooter or my bike somewhere. She'd be gone for hours. And there was no way of contacting me. There was no way yeah. for me. Like, and it was just like. Yeah, that I miss. I got to say. Yeah. Like, Bye. The, the, <laughs> you know. Yeah, the world, the world seemed like there was more adventure to be had, and it was like, and it seemed quieter because I don't know why. It just it seemed quieter. Like maybe because when I would be going out as a kid, it'd be mostly in like the summertime. If it would be after school or in the summertime, and like people were either at work or they were home because they they had come home to have dinner and stuff, and this was after that. And so there were just wasn't as much in the middle of the week cars going everywhere. It seemed, yeah. and at least that's how I remember it where I lived. And of course, that can differ depending on where you live. But I just remember, like, they, especially in the summertime, mill a day, there'd be almost no traffic. I go to my grandmother's house. She was in Dresher, PA, which is not too far away from Willow Grove. And I, I just remember walking around that neighborhood, just seeing like nobody. It was also like a lot of like older people had retired there, uh, I guess. And it was it was kind of. It was kind of crazy. I actually kind of loved it because I, I, I was always more of a of an introverted kind of loner. But I like just walking around and, or going on a bike and something, just exploring the neighborhood. Yeah, you just disappear. Go, you, I go down. Yeah, and I go down like these steep hills. Like you do stuff today, p- parents would probably freak out and think that it's too dangerous. But uh, it, it, in some ways, I think it was just a lot safer. They just, uh, and it could just be you know false memories. It just seemed like there was less traffic and there was less aggressive driving and there was less people around during the times when I was out. So that's why I miss the, that kind of – I don't even know how to put it into words, that experience that you can't even explain to Zoomers today. That's like, oh, yeah, and like I, I, being able to go out and just exist and yeah. just do something and be present in the moment, and that that's the majority of what's lost now, right? It's just yeah. people, be, people are going out, but you go to a show even and everybody's there with their phones. So like mm-hmm. 
just you had didn't have a choice you were there in the moment with your yep. friends or by yourself or with whoever you were strangers even if you are to show but like you were there yeah and you yeah. didn't have anything else to do you had nowhere to post any of this yeah you didn't have to worry about grabbing the shot for instagram you know to worry about taking video for later you just were there yeah and i am that's uh, something i miss i uh you know well i, I found myself i intentionally tried to Okay, so when I go to shows, like I, I started going, like also the broken goblin. I started bringing my camera and stuff because I, I didn't have anything to do during the show, and uh, so sometimes I would get like a little antsy there and stuff. So I started doing that, but then like for a while now, you know what I, what I try to do is I try to be intentional about it. Like I always try to be intentional with my use of these things. I don't want to live a completely mediated experience. Now there, I do like, I do like having some photos of an event or something to go to. Cause just like the other day, just like yesterday, you know, my, my dad's birthday came up and we couldn't all get together because of the snow was like a problem for my sister to come. But you know, there was this little video that my phone made for me based upon literally like more than a decade of photos that I've taken that had him in it. And the algorithm on the phone picked up his face and put together oh, yeah. a little video. And then, and then I shared that around and it was like, I like that. I like the fact that my technology in that respect because I took a few pictures, and it wasn't like a lot. Like I would take a few pictures at holidays and stuff, and then it comes back later, and it helps me to remember more clearly and relive those experiences. That's a benefit of the technology. But if you live in it in this completely mediated way, I saw this uh, photo going around social media of all these people at, um, I don't know what, what it was, that were looking at some event, and like every single person that you said had their phone up. And it's like, I don't want to live that way. That's not. That's no way to live or experience something. So when I go to like Broken Goblet, if I'm not – shooting the show with my regular camera like i'm not intentionally trying to capture the entire event which is a different thing different mentality if i'm just there with my phone i will try to take one or two or a couple photos throughout the night when really interesting things happen uh and then i'll edit it on my phone and post it uh and then i try to i try to like experience you know uh more of the show you know unmediated i'm not looking right. I'm not looking if even if I'm not looking at the stage, I'm like listening, even if I'm just keeping my fingers occupied on uh, uh, I'm trying to pay attention to the music. Uh, well, I, I, as yeah. a musician all, at Broken Goblet, always appreciate when you come up to the stage with your camera or your phone or whatever, whatever it is, because I know it's going to be a stellar quality picture. So thank thank you. you for doing that and keep I doing it. Yeah, I <laughs> I would like to. Uh, yeah, I've been um, I, I have pictures from there that I still haven't edited from like last year i'm sure like, like early last year uh so i tried to slow down that and focus more on lately on uh computer programming stuff but that's why i just do my phone and i was like and i was like look at the challenge like what can i do with my phone so every time i go there i'm trying to find like a new angle uh like first friday i was just at and i was like okay i want to take a picture now but i kind of want I, I i don't really i don't really want it to be like it doesn't have to be super sharp or anything i ended up trying to make this thing where it was kind of sort of in focus and sort of blurry in the background. I just kind of edited it a certain way too. And I was like, oh, this is pretty neat. I just try to f find something different to do that's that's interesting every time. Yeah, I have, and I like that Jay makes, they make the lights different every show too. So like, I yeah, have, that's, that's I have a photographer friend who comes in and shoots me once in a while. And yeah, he was there last open mic and the lights were like red and blue randomly. Like Jay just does random lighting. Yep, yep. And he was like, oh, this is cool. I can try out my, my, camera i have a new camera exactly. i want to try it in a dark setting and try yep. with these lights and it's just cool that it's I, always um, a different view what some of the best photos i've ever taken are there like i took i still don't know how the how the lights and the, and and my camera everything worked out but that first especially that first i think camera thief show I, it was just like a magical set of experiences some just truly my favorite photos that i've ever gotten were from that night it was yeah. just like a, a, like everything came together, and the, the lighting was perfect, and I and I managed to just capture things well. And I don't know, so, like bro, that's why again another reason why I love it uh, as from a photography perspective is just there's always it's always interesting and and fun to take photos there, and just no no one else bothers to put that much effort in. Frankly, that, that yeah. so much effort goes into this stuff, even for like an acoustic show on a Thursday night. Like there's still effort. It's still professional. Like yeah, they still light you professionally. And audio is professional, and that's why I t I'm telling people with the open mic that like they want to come in with a full band, and I'm like, yeah, they see this big stage and they're like, oh, yeah, right. cool, I can bring my band for this open mic. And sure, the space is there. We can accommodate a full band easily. Obviously, the problem is that Jay is running you for open mic. He's running yeah. you to play three or four or five songs. 
are we going to plug in a full band and mix a full right. band? Yeah, for three or have three six songs. people. You know, that's a lot of work for for them to play four songs and then yeah. have to unhook yeah. so the next guy can get. So it's like, yeah, yeah we that's have too much space, setup. But right. It is too yeah. much, and yeah. so it's a little bit of a bummer for some people because there's some open mics that do full bands and that's great, mm -hmm. but for the audio quality that you're getting at Goblet. And to have a sound guy mixing for you and taking care of every little adjustment, that's worth yeah, its, its weight it's, in gold. And it's not even just a sound guy. Like I have I have been a sound guy. Like I can I can work, I can do it. I am not like very good. Doing. Jay Jay is not a sound guy. He is like a a real professional. I I play one on TV kind of deal. Yeah. Like, you know? Um, so if I would not want to waste his time, you know, like I that would be if I was a band going up there, I, if I knew anything about his, Jay's reputation, I'm like I am, yeah. I'm gonna have, sure I have my stuff together. I don't want. That's why this every out. every Grinch night, I make sure that I write, I write some song about Jay and his sound abilities and how people <laughs> yeah. people go up there and they don't know if if it was their first time meeting him, they don't know that he knows what he's talking about. So yeah, they go exactly. in and they're like, oh, I'm gonna plug in my whatever, blah blah blah, Mike, and he's like, no, I got it. Don't worry yeah, just it. just don't worry about it. But that's nice. I mean, I guess uh, once you know that that's the plan, it help does it help you relax more? As yeah, because yeah, you're like, oh, and the sound's gonna be good. Just I'm gonna do whatever he tells me. Yeah, and we're good. Every, everywhere else, we mix ourselves. Like I remember, yeah, that's hard. Uh, I remember the first time that mm. Mike and Jay came to see me at another place not goblet they came to see me at dog and bull when i first started playing here so like 10 years ago probably wow and they came and i was playing dog and bull and i had all my speakers set up and all it was all my equipment and i got down with my set and i was breaking down and, and mike came over and he was like that's all your stuff i'm like yeah and he goes you have to bring it all with you every time you i'm like yeah Mike. that's how it is in real life that's real what we world. do everywhere else <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's, it's a big thing and like you have to mix yourself and play and get the sound right. It's a lot of work, especially if it's one person. I'm doing this all by myself. So, like, yeah. I can do it, but exactly. I'd much rather have Jay there to do it for. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's like, I'm like, exactly, exactly. So, um, so Chrissy, you're, 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 we haven't gotten to you yet, and I know we're already going a little long. So, what do you miss? What do I that? miss? Do same, miss? same ideas. I miss that, that freedom in the summer. The, you know, there was a, there was, yeah, it was kind of nice to like leave your house and no one could find you as well. Yeah, <laughs> I got you know, know what I mean. Like the, yeah, I know. It was just like come opposite. come back for dinner. So you just, you just yeah. need a cheap Casio watch. It's all you needed back then, technology wise. I'd cheap watch, right. and then you just so uh, you check it. You set an alarm, like it would set an alarm or something. Like oh, I got to go back home for dinner now. <clears throat> I feel like that there were definitely. It's funny because I probably, you know, as a teenager, I never got into like real trouble, you know, like trouble, trouble. But there were definitely some things where I got myself into some some pickles, so to speak. But I, I had to like figure it out on my own. You know what I mean? Because I, I didn't really have a choice, you know, like. You're, you're um, Googling, how do I fix this situation? <laughs> yeah, right. right. No, yeah, there was no Googling it. I was like, mm. oh, you know, I, I tried to, you know, like a ended up in new jersey by accident and you know Map quest well actually the one time i ended up in like i was driving well this was in in college i was driving from massachusetts to maine and i was supposed to go through vermont and i ended up in new hampshire but didn't know <laughs> it happens <laughs> yeah, i made a like a wrong you know. turn at boston and you know drove through. <laughs> anyway i figured it out eventually and um but you know you know, you don't. Can you imagine there was no GPS. You yeah, know, it took a lot like, if you made a wrong <laughs> turn at Boston, and you know, I remember I, driving uh, around with those sheets at the MapQuest yes. printed sheets. Oh yeah, like, figure oh, them out. That was me. I and I would have to tape it to my dashboard so I could see it while driving if I was by myself. Yeah. And I, if I got lost or something, I, I at least I had a cell phone because I would call them like, "I am lost now. Help oh, me." I didn't have a cell phone you know? until. 2006 i was so late to the game wow nice. i had a little earlier yeah than I, I know um, i had one in college I don't on know purpose I, I didn't want one i was like i don't want a cell phone yeah. um but yeah there were definitely i i mean like really ridiculous things like me and my friend got separated in london you know but we found each other you know yeah, I got uh, on the train and she I, I navigated i mean yeah. i navigated london and paris in like 2002 that's when i went a long time ago and I mean, all I had was a paper map. I had a little booklet I kept in my pocket, and I didn't have I didn't have any phone. I actually had to go to like these phone booths. 
where you pay money to like get on a really slow internet or send an email. Yeah. It wasn't even wire. It was just oh, like super slow. Know. It was just, it was just like a, it was a screen, a crappy keyboard. It was in like a phone booth thing. It was like this weird thing anyway, you do. My, but, my point yeah. is, is now I have a, a child who's 17, you know, and it's like, I mean, she's actually more independent than probably some kids are, but you know, like we, t we talked about getting gas in the car. And we did it once before she got her license. But then it was like day two of her driving. And she was like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. She's like calling me from the gas station. She's like, can't get my debit card to work. Can't get the pump thing open. I was like, well, go pay cash. She's like, how do you pay cash? I was like, <laughs> Wait, yeah. I was you like, know? you walk in the store and give the guy the cash. She's yeah. Like, um... Oh, I was like. She was like, you I don't say the pump number. I was like, yeah, yeah oh, I don't either, but right. I did it the other day. I did it with my yeah, my car. Like, my car didn't work. My, or, my car didn't work. One or the other. Day. Or you just moved to New Jersey and they pumped the gas for you. There you go. He's right. right. Oh, actually, weird thing to get used to. Wawa, Wawa has some kind of um thing I just saw on their their app. It was like a new rewards program, and they have an exception for New Jersey because it says you can use the points for gas for Wawa gas except New Jersey yeah. <laughs> because it's not allowed. They still pump Jersey. your gas in New Jersey. You're required to. So you, you're, you're breaking you the law if you do it yourself. Apparently, yeah, they they yell at you. But I don't want I don't want somebody else to pump my gas. Like I don't trust people. How <laughs> does that work? Them them to do well. What are they going to do? <laughs> I don't know if they're doing it right. I don't Wait, know. do you have to give them your credit card? Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't want to do that at all. I, mean, I they, like they just run it at the pump right there. They don't take it in or anything. But yeah, like, yeah, they do it. I, I like I appreciate it in the winter when like I don't want to get on my yeah. car. It's twelve I, degrees. My favorite thing is to use Apple Pay to buy at a pump. Sure. And my watch I just go beep. It's like yeah. I feel I, I still feel like I'm living in the future when I do that. Yeah, the, the tap card is, has changed everything. The tap card, I, yeah. I was I was telling somebody the other day they were like sticking their card in the reader and it wasn't reading and they did it like eight times and it wasn't reading. I'm like, did you tap the did you not tap? Always, always tap first. Then yeah, get we're it once before it's right away. and the 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 Europeans and the Japanese that may be listening are like, we've had that for many years. Yeah, guys. You idiots. Yeah, you <laughs> stupid backwards <laughs> Americans. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, is that is that it for a game called something, Chrissy? We're gonna wrap it up now. I that? think we're gonna. I think we should do our wrap up, Steve. Well, okay. Then uh, before we do that, uh, we what have to we wrap doing? up, Mike. No, Mike. Oh, Mike has okay. to let us know. Let us know, Mike. Where can people find out more about Mike Estabrook and your shenanigans? So my website is mikeestabrookacoustic.com. Uh, I have a Facebook page, Mike Estabrook Acoustic. I have an Instagram, M Estabrook Music, um, which is they're not all. But the Facebook is purely here are my gigs. This is what I do. This is the only reason I go on Facebook is just to put out the gigs. Instagram is a little more mix of music and personal life i'm i'm a cat influencer apparently <laughs> my cat is staring at me as we speak wanting to nice. get let out of the room that we're in um but yeah instagram facebook my website is my guest acoustic you're looking at it, all the dates yep. are there it's all synced from my whatever my uh qr code if you can if you come to a show you can scan it and get to all that stuff there but yeah i play every thursday at broken goblet and then also on the weekends, other places, uh, you'll see me around. Wait, you're a cat influencer? How did we make it all this time without talking about that? It was a secret. No, you didn't come up in the color game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have, I've always been a cat person. I love cat. Can you see my shirt? Oh, what? Wait, let me no, adopt. You. Adopt. Oh, black cats. Yeah. Oh, I nice. I have a I have a black cat that nice. That well. That. Okay, you're gonna have to explain. <laughs> we, we can't we can't end yet without explaining the cat. So basically, a cat has moved into Chrissy's house. She does not actually own this cat. Okay, so but explain what happened. Chrissy. Cat knows where to get food. It yeah. started before they fed the cat. This is what's so weird about All it. Right. The cat so just started coming over a while ago. Probably like at this point, like it was well before the summer, if not further back. The cat would come visit. The cat would like sit on her porch and take a nap then the cat would like go away for a day or two then then the one day my daughter let the cat in the house and then the cat for months the cat would just come over and hang out we didn't feed it though we didn't feed it anything um and then finally like we got some treats and then every time we turned around the cat was still there like it would like i would wake up in the morning and, the, and this was during the summer so 
I would wake up and it would be like before six and the cat would still be on my porch. And I'm like, and we, the, the people who like own the cat, like we, we know who they are. And my daughter was like, yeah, such and such says the cat hasn't been home in like a month. I was like, Jesus Christ. So I guess we should feed the cat. <laughs> then winter came and then we were like, all right, well, I guess we can't put the cat out because we were putting yeah. the cat out at night, every night, hoping he would go back to, Go home, home, cat. Go right. home. Right. Well, he wasn't doing that. So then we let him stay over. So and now. <laughs> and I won't leave. Now, he never leaves. Well, that now means, that he, means leaves. he likes your home better than wherever he was living before, which is yeah. probably just under some car somewhere. So I, I don't <laughs> right. I don't know what's going on with this this cat. And it, like if you if you push it outside, it'll just <laughs> come up to the glass and like go meow and tap on it. It wants to come in. It, it's it's the Very weirdest sweet, thing. Though. I've ne- I've never seen a cat just move in. They, they literally Chrissy did nothing. This cat just started coming over. It just it just mm-hmm. adopted them. It adopted Any, Chrissy. Anything better than an outside? Outside is not a great world yeah. for a cat. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And this is definitely how we don't have a litter box though, so it goes out like a dog. Out, like, goes. Okay, like, well, that's even better for you so, to clean the box. I know. I don't have to clean the litter box though. So. <laughs> the cat's super sweet though. It like played vet with my daughter for like a half hour i've never seen a cat sit there while someone like fake combs it <laughs> and fake uses the blow dryer and i mean like a solid half hour it, it sat on a stool in my kitchen like laid there while she like played with it like it was a baby doll i was like that's awesome what weird cat are you but that's trust yes i trust I that know. you're not gonna hurt me you're only gonna comb my hair Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, I'll have to cat- check out your cat influencer page. Yeah, I make. I, so I when I am bored of making music videos, I make a cat video. I have I have three, and two of them were adopted together during COVID, so they're younger and they still do dopey stuff all the time. So I, nice. I get grab them on video whenever I can, and I have never, not once, had a music video of mine gone viral. Of me playing, singing, nothing. I've gotten lots of views on these videos, but never, never <laughs> exploded viral video. I have a cat video of them, a little game that I invented for them of them playing with treats. You'll see it if you go on my Instagram page. Uh, it's got between Instagram and TikTok over 30 million views. Oh my ridiculous. God. Ridiculous. That's crazy. Completely ridiculous, and it took you me like a cat influencer. It took me like twenty minutes to make it, and it was just a throwaway. Like nobody's gonna watch this, but it's making me laugh. So whatever. And yeah, so I tell everybody that I'm, I'm a musician, but really my cats are the the stars. It's not me. Is oh, it, there we go. One, is it one of these? Oh, it's got to be this one. Is it the one with the cats? No, it's no, keep going. To, I mean, you see the cats, but keep if you scroll down. It was probably a few months ago. Um, 30 oh. million views. It's, I don't, I don't know just, if it'll let me. It just was insane. But anyway, it's somewhere on this page here, this Instagram. You're, get, you're getting close. Yeah, that's it. I don't know if it'll let me play it uh, if I scroll down too far. But look at there's a lot of cat videos on here. So <laughs> so check out uh, Mike. Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes. Mike, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's M. Esterbrook Music. Yep, that's Instagram. just my Instagram handle. So. Fun. Okay, excellent. All right, Jeez. and you'll be back at Broken Goblet. I guess I will be back on Thursday. It's open mic night. So if anybody wants to come play, just grab your instrument and come on out. But it's not just music. If you're a comedian or you're a poet or whatever you want to use a mic to do, come on yeah. down. Doesn't it doesn't have to be just music. We're just yeah, this... having fun and, and sharing talent. This episode should be releasing on January 11th. If you're listening to this on the day it comes out, which is Thursday. So open mic night. So there you go. Excellent. Nice. Uh, okay, Chrissy. So what time is it? Wrap it up time, Steve. Wrap okay, it here up. Here we go. So uh, if uh, you like the content here you uh, and you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, and ring that bell because it, it actually helps with the algorithm. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Jengtown Arts Garage. Also go to jagcast.show. I just set up a new web page for that. It should be a little easier for you to subscribe, but you can find all the places you can subscribe to us there and play video, play the old episodes in audio format there uh, and look through the show notes. You can also go to jagatownartsgarage.com as our main place on the internet. 
Uh, that is a new version of that website is coming along online soon. It may be available by the time you're listening to this or very soon thereafter. Uh, that's going to be our the place to go to eventually subscribe and follow us and get our newsletter and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you put that in your bookmarks. And, of course, if you'd like to help us monetarily because, uh, you know, this stuff costs money. <laughs> Making a show costs money. Check out artsgarage.com slash coffee, and you can uh, send us a little money to help uh, with pay our bills and help Chrissy keep her caffeine addiction going. And, and buy cat food. And buy cat food, yes. <laughs> okay, Mike, so... And uh, treats. <laughs> thank you very much for coming. Now stick around. You can hear the... You can see the other the other goofy video I made for our ending credits. Nice. So. Thank you guys for having me. It was awesome. A lot of fun. Thanks for coming. Yeah. I hope to see you at, uh, at Goblet or anywhere else in the near future and come hang out and Bring your camera and take some amazing pictures. Indeed, I will. See you soon. Awesome. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you. We'll learn to break the ice together.